Now, I know when it comes to where both these devices are placed in this comparison, it probably doesn't make sense for these devices to be going against each other to the point where it actually kind of seems unfair. But <laughs> let's take a step and look at this, right? For the compact size and the nature of both the iPhone 12 mini and the Pixel 4a, I think it makes more sense to compare them and have a closer look and see at double the outright starting price of £699 for the 12 mini versus £349 for the Pixel 4 way. Is it worth it to pay double the price? So yeah, this is it. iPhone 12 mini versus the Pixel 4a. It's a small battle, people. Hi, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this and you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS to Tech Lover Squad so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. This will be a quick fire comparison between both these devices as I've already done in-depth experience reviews on both the phones. So you're gonna find links in the description below of both of them to see their full reviews. Firstly, with the design and the build, I have to give this one to the iPhone 12 mini. Now look, I really respect the Pixel 4a's clever use of polycarbonate carbonate plastic and making it feel way stronger and solid to the point where this matte finish at the back with it makes it feel way more premium than it should for a plastic polycarbonate phone but man the buttons as well they're so nice and clicky with that mint color at the touch of it as well on the power button and also the fact that you do get a headphone port USB-C and dual speaker still this can be a reason enough for the Pixel 4 here to kind of low-key win it but that's until you actually pick up the 12 mini and use it. The brush aluminium frame is so nice, backed with the feel of the premium glass and that compact size of it as well. With the IP68 water and dust resistance, the well-balanced weight of the 12 mini, it really does let you know that once you hold it, man, this really does feel like a top tier premium device. And again, the buttons as well, they feel amazing with the addition of obviously that trademark hardware silent switch. It's a win for the 12 mini. And I think it's more of a personal choice, but ah, man, the 12 mini here when it comes to the build is way better. Now with the display and in almost every way, the 12 mini is technically the better display, but I actually prefer the overall display experience of the Pixel 4a. Now, yes, the Pixel 4a doesn't have the best brightness and auto brightness management compared to the iPhone 12 mini, but having that slightly bigger display at 5.8 inches versus 6.4 inch is a win personally. And most importantly, that single hole punch allows for a more all screen design, which makes such a big difference when it comes to the viewing experience, especially when you're doing things like watching videos. Now, to be fair, I do understand that the notch is functionally there and needed for Face ID on the iPhone 12 mini, but with the smaller display of the 12 mini, it does really remind you how dated and out of place this notch design is. For me, I enjoy the overall experience of the display on the Pixel 4a way, way more. Now, specs and performance, when it comes to it, I think it's safe to say that this is pretty much a landslide overall win for the iPhone 12 mini. But the Pixel 4a surprisingly has a few things better to actually pull it back and give it some respective look. Now look, there is definitely no competition between what Apple's packing with the 5nm A14 Bionic chip with 5G support versus the obviously Snapdragon 730G on the Pixel 4a. Based on this, the iPhone 12 mini, like I said before, right now is the most powerful compact smartphone you can purchase. No cap, no lies no reach but where the iphone 12 mini does fall short is when it comes to ram and storage this is where the pixel 4a does well because although it only comes in one single SKU, which is obviously with six gigabytes of ram 128 gigabytes of storage i do feel this is better value than the base storage of 64 gigabytes on the iphone 12 mini now yes i know what everyone's going to say you can scale it up to 128 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes on the 12 mini but then you are still stuck with four gigabytes of ram and then on top of that you're paying a lot more money as well this is obviously an overall win for the 12 mini but with strong considerations for the pixel 4a for sure now when it comes to the battery and the charging experience they are kind of very similar but the 12 mini is obviously given an overall better charging experience which makes sense for the price that is commanded but when it comes to the actual battery life itself when you're using it day to day it's definitely better on the pixel 4a you're looking at 2227 milliamps on the 12 mini versus 3140 milliamps on the pixel 4a which both of them are supporting near enough the same charging speeds of 20 watts versus 18 watts with the 12 mini taking the edge with support for 12 watt 
wireless charging with the use of MagSafe. Now, both of them recharged 100% near enough at the same time, which is probably around an hour, 30 minutes. I did an ultimate charging test, so definitely go check it out. And I would say it's more impressive on a Pixel 4a to recharge within that time with less wattage because it does have a bigger battery cell in there. Now, again, since I'm not much of a wireless charging person, I'll give this one to the Pixel 4a for the bigger battery and the longer lasting battery life. But if you do care about wireless charging, that's what you get with the premium phone with the glass back design. <laughs> now, comparing software, this is my least favorite part of these comparisons because it's pretty much comparing like apples to oranges. And as much as apples and oranges are both fruits, just like this in terms of their different approach, their benefits, as well as their drawbacks. This is near enough the same principle to the fact that these are both operating systems, but it's the same way you kind of have to look at iOS versus stock Android from Google. Now, someone who definitely does enjoy Android more, I'll be a bit unfair, and I will give this one to the Pixel 4 here, but all respect to the iPhone 12 mini, because it's more powerful and so well optimized that you know, guaranteed, you're getting a minimum five years of software updates from day one, from Apple, no issues. Plus, the benefits of things like native apps, such as obviously, like I said before, FaceTime, iMessage, AirDrop, will always be something that will draw people in, especially if they've got other Apple devices and people that use other Apple devices that they communicate with. Now, what's obviously good is with the Pixel being a device that you're getting directly from Google, you will get day one updates for the latest version of Android for three years, which no other Android OEM can match on the same length and also the same timely pace. And I'm gonna be very honest, as much as I've given this round to the Pixel 4a, I have to hold my hands up and say that this round is good enough to be a draw. And actually in some cases to some people, a win for the iPhone 12 mini. Now, when it comes to the camera experience, the wins break down into two separate wins for each of these phones. And again, I did an ultimate camera comparison between both these phones. So go check it out for a full detail breakdown of the camera performance of both the 12 mini and the Pixel 4a. But in short, for video performance, it's the iPhone 12 mini all the way, no question. The Pixel 4a does well enough when it comes to video. The audio pickup is great. The video performance is not bad at all, but it's definitely not in the same league as the 12 mini. Now photos, that's a different story. And yes, I do like the fact that the 12 mini does have an ultra wide angle lens, making it a much more flexible hardware system for the camera. But the output of the pictures on the Pixel 4a is my favorite, especially when you're taking things like selfies with the portrait mode. Now look, low key, we can probably put this down to a draw, right? That's for me personally, because obviously there's a lot of different ways. And if you look at the price difference, you probably can say that the, you know, the 12 mini is offering a lot more and it kind of has to you for that price difference. Now face ID versus the fingerprint scanner with the biometrics. Now, this one is just straight up. It has to be the Pixel 4a for me. Now look, as much as I prefer the fingerprint scanner to be at the front and in display because you get more access to it, there's nothing that beats an actual solid hardware fingerprint scanner, especially in this climate that we're in right now. A fingerprint scanner is way more superior than Face ID. Now look, I do wish Google would allow a convenient face unlock with the selfie camera, but if it's the one I'm gonna be picking, it's gonna be the Pixel 4a all the way with the fingerprint scanner. Whew. <laughs> now wrapping this up, I'm sure you can see this was low key, not such a small and straightforward battle. And in a lot of ways, the difference with the iPhone 12 mini, it can be justified. But then again, the Pixel 4a punches so much above its weight that it easily makes you think and rethink spending any more than the 349 pounds that is commanding on any other phones might just be quite questionable. That's it for me again, Ben from Lover of Tech. Let me know between these two, do you think it's worth having to spend that double on the iPhone 12 mini or saving your money and getting a Pixel 4a? That's it for me, man. Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this, you know exactly what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS, the Tech Lover Squad, so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. I hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.